Hey, here, Diane Prince here. I'm going to share with you five tips on working with contingent staffing firms, how to negotiate and how to get how to get them to work for you and work well, work well for you. OK, so and if you so a contingent staffing firm is a firm where you pay them a fee if they find you the right person and only if they find you and you hire the person that they sourced for you. OK. Number one is when you're looking for when you're hiring a contingent staffing firm, the first step is typically you have the initial like sales call or consultation or whatever, and they're going to tell you what their fee is. And usually a client's first reaction is to negotiate the fee. So if it's for example, say they they say they tell you our fee is 25%. And what that means is the candidates, it would be 25% of the candidates and annual salary from their first year. Okay. So they might tell you, they say they might tell you it's 25%. And just making sure I'm still recording. I just did a whole half an hour video and realized I wasn't recording. Oops. Okay. So it's going to be even better because I've got a, I've got some practice now. Anyway, so they tell you 25. percent What do you, what do you initial? What do you, what is going to be the first thought in your head? Put it in the comments too. I want to hear. I want to hear. <laughs> Type in the comments. What's your first thought? It's probably going to be, can you do 20 percent? or X or whatever. And by the way, there's a lot of numbers between 20 and 25%. So there's a lot of negotiating room, okay? Here's here's the deal. When look at it this way, don't look at it as of course you have to you have to have the budget to pay this fee before you bring on a contingent firm because you've got to remember you're going to have to pay the fee the Usually it's the day the person starts is when your invoices do. So you have to make sure that you're going to be able to have that cash put aside and pay the fee. So assuming, assuming that you do, don't over negotiate the fee because your initial instinct, like human nature might be to want to want to negotiate the rate. But here's how to look at it. If they're contingent, their recruiters in their firm, you're, are, you're in competition with other clients. Now, if you do a retain search, that's a, that's a different story because you'll probably have dedicated resources looking for your search if you're if you actually pay up front. But this is in this video, I'm talking about five tips on working with contingent firms and those are the ones that are going to pay you once you find the right person. So, don't over negotiate the fee. Think about it this way. Say, okay, it's 25. Say they say 25%. Say you get them down to 20%, okay? Then you get them down to 25%, you're feeling all good and you you're this badass negotiator. And then they go to their team and they're like, "Okay, well this is this role, blah 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 blah. Here's the details. It's 20%." And they're like, "Well, we're working on these other roles that are 25 28% or whatever, why would I work on that role that's 20%? Because typically their commission is going to be is going to be based on the um, the fee. Obviously, that's part that they're in contingent staffing people are it's high pressure. They've got usually several roles they're working on. So if there's a 25% role and there's a 20% role, chances are, which role are they going to work on? Now, there are other things, though. There's other things that you could negotiate that could make it worthwhile for them, even if you get a lower fee. So we'll talk about that. And one, uh, one other thing, too, that you want to avoid is you want to make sure that you're a client who's easy to work with, because otherwise you could negotiate this. And sometimes sometimes contingent recruiters, one of the sometimes part of their bonus is they might be bonus on how many fee agreements they get. So you could get a fee agreement. You could be spending all this time getting to know them and telling them your job description and your requirements. And then if you're if you're kind of a pain in the neck, they might not want to work with you, but they got the agreement so they can they can check that off the box. And then um, and that's that's not a good situation. That's not a place that you want to be in. So you want to be easy to work with so that they can actually fill your role and do a good job at it. OK, so 
if you are negotiating and even if you're even if you're not negotiating down the rate but if you do and even if you don't another thing that you can do to help you is to give them an exclusive so say they say 25 percent, you're like okay you really you are determined to get down to like 22 percent or something or so you could say like okay look i'll how about this i'll get you let's see if you do 22 and a half percent then I will give you a two week exclusive. And what that means is that they have, you're not, you're not giving this to other agencies and maybe this is another negotiation. Maybe you're not going to look, maybe you say to them, look, I'm not going to, I won't look and I'm not going to call this out to other agencies. I'm not going to post the job for two weeks. You have an exclusive for two weeks. Now there, that makes it more interesting because they're going to be able to, they're going to be more motivated to, fill that role or to work on your role because they know they have a higher chance of filling the role. So they're always looking at like what's, you know, they're a business, right? They obviously they want to provide good service and they want to do, they want to do right for you, but they're also, they're a business. They're all looking at, you know, they're, it's, it's a grind. There's a lot of competition. And so to make it the easiest that you can for them and the most interesting, the most enticing. So when you're negotiating those fees and all of this stuff, look at the re- like the recruiter's point of view. And this is basically, this is your incentive. This is how you're incentivizing the recruiters to find that person for you. Okay, so the exclusive. So the first one is don't over negotiate the fee. And then also you can use an exclusive and consider that as something to make it, to make them more incentivized to fill your role. And of course, this is, this is background information as to, you have to be really clear and not background information, super important information, but I I teach this in my, in my program and I work with one-on-one clients and I have a program where it's, I teach all of the steps of hiring people from systematizing. I don't know if you know this, but the way that most people interview is actually not a predictor of finding the right person. It's actually just as random as blindly hiring someone that you've never met. So that's the way that most people interview. So even when you're working with firms, you need to make sure that you have your interview systems in place to help the firms be successful and to help you because you don't want to get a person from a firm and you're paying 25% for the person and then you're not prepared. Like you don't have, you don't have the actual tools to have a crystal clear idea of what you need and what the description is and what the mission of the role is. So it all could be a waste of time if you're not completely prepared. So little plug there. And if you want to talk to me about it and how I, you can learn that, then I would, I will tell you how I teach that and how you can be super prepared when you talk to a firm. And the other thing is be accessible. Okay. So one of the things when this is inside information on contingency firms is they'll rate the clients on how likely it is that the role that they will fill your role. And those are the roles that they're going to work on. Otherwise, why not? They're a business, they're running a business. So they're gonna look at these things. Like one thing is the is the fee, and that is super, that is super enticing to recruiters. Everybody wants 30% fee. That's exciting, right? That's more exciting to recruit for that than to recruit for someone with 22%. So that's something to think about. But otherwise, other things you can do besides that exclusivity is be accessible. So this is another negotiating tool too. So you can say like when I was when I was recruiting last, like I'd always say to somebody, if somebody negotiated a fee, if they negotiated down and say, okay, I will give you that. So I might say, okay, our fee is, is 25%. I will give you 23% or whatever, you know, whatever is, is, is going to work. Here's what I need from you. One thing is, it's their calendar. Okay. So you can set up your calendar to, if you have whatever platform you use, whatever, if it's Calendly or whatever, set up a special event that is for for interviews so it's not like going to be your whole calendar where you don't want people like if you're if you're have your calendar available 
for networking or for prospects or free consultations. You don't also want people to randomly schedule interviews throughout your day when you're not prepared and you're sitting here doing something else and you're like, oh shoot, I gotta go interview. So set aside a couple of blocks of time. And if you say to them, trust me, if you say to an agency, these are the times I can interview, give them two blocks of time or give them your, give them your Calendly so they can plug the people in. That is gonna save you a lot of stress and systematize the process. And it's also gonna make you a lot easier to work with for the agency. Having someone's having the hiring manager's calendar is huge. It's, 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 um, it's very helpful. Okay. And then also you can also give them, this is not one of the five things. The first thing is don't over negotiate the fee, give pass, consider giving an exclusive, be accessible. And also another thing that you can do is have, you could request a meeting with their recruiters. So you could say like, whenever I got a new client, I would invite my, I want, if it was my client, I want every recruiter working on my client's roles. So most recruiters did not think of doing this or did not do this. So I would assemble all of the recruiters in on a Zoom call with my client to have an opportunity for the client to introduce themselves. So think about it, you're building a relationship with the recruiters who are going to talk to they're, they're talking to candidates about your business, about your company. So tell them about, get, have them, the more that they get to know you, because when recruiters, if you imagine, and it, you know, if people are remote even, or if they're, if they're in an office and they're on the, on a floor or whatever, they've got like, say I'm a recruiter, I might be working on seven roles. And if it's, if it's not my client, so the, a role could come to me that's from another recruiter that I, but I, it's confusing. And I'm like, okay, well, this company, like they're just names of companies and I might not really know. And like, I've read the job description, but I don't really know. I've never talked to them. I know it's not really like clear. And it's, so one thing that you could do, you could either, you can make a video to, to the recruiters be like, Hey, I'd be like, Hey, I'm Diane. This is what I'm looking for. I wanted to introduce you guys. I'm so excited that to partner with you. I know you're going to do great looking, working on this role. And I it, say, say you're a, a looking for a tech person say you're building out uh, building out an app and you need your first software and enge software engineer that's competitive so you say to them look this this is the, these are these are my core values so don't trust that just the person that's taking your order is going to be able to convey that to their team as much as you can so that's a little like bonus that's like a three and a half because that wasn't um <laughs> that wasn't on my notes but develop a relationship Get the get everyone in the agency familiar with your company, and the more the more knowledge they have to sell your role, the better equipped they're going to be, and the more chances that they're going to have success at filling your role. And then number four is give quick feedback. So there is nothing worse than well, there's worse things, but but <laughs> you get you get my drift. If you're a recruiter and you're you're spending all this time, say I set up three interviews for you, you go through these three interviews, and then all of a sudden, crickets, that happens. And it's, it's annoying. Okay. So if you are a hiring manager, give feedback. If you are a hiring manager, who is having an assistant schedule through the recruiting agency, give feedback, be accessible. The agency will be able to fine tune their search and they'll also be able to, they're building a relationship with their candidates. So it's tough to be a recruiter and your candidates are wondering if they, if you got feedback from the interview, if you don't have feedback, like you look bad, it's not good for your business. It's not, it's not professional. And so even if, even if the person isn't the right fit, give them, give them as quick feedback as you can. You don't have to make a big deal out of it. You can send a quick email, you can send a video, you can do a loom and let them know why and um, give, give feedback as quickly as you can. And then finally, the last one, the last tip that I have, and by the way, also just make sure in this process, you have to be prepared. Oh, one thing, another little like a bonus I'll slip in there is you can also have it like what I teach my, I, I have, a, I have a, do, do, do a little plug in my program because there's, it's much bigger than this. The, the contingent recruitment is one source of finding people. There's a lot of different sources and it's extremely important that you have your other systems and tools in place. 
to make this work. So don't make it random, make it as least little, at least random, <laughs> as random as possible so that you can have the highest success of finding the right person. So one of the things that I teach my clients to do is have a pre-screening interview. And this is something that you can have, you can have the agency do for you. So that's something that you can actually outsource to them and they can communicate with you and tell you what, because even if you're interviewing by on your own and not through a contingent and not through a firm, there's, I strongly believe in the quick pre-screening interview that's going to get people to, um, to, to, to you're going to be able to weed people out a lot faster and know if you want to spend more time talking to that person. And that's something that you can give the agency to do. Okay. And then number five, I know there were little bonuses in here. So this might be like number eight, but let's say number five is hire quickly. So when you know that you have the right person, when you want to hire that person, make a decision because candidates are perishable. They don't, they're looking for jobs. Chances are. Their chances are they're not just lollygagging around hoping that you're going to make a decision. If they're looking for an opportunity, even if the agency has an uncovered a passive candidate for you, chances are they've, they might start looking. They might realize, hey, you know, this is, there's actually a lot more opportunity out there than my current role. I'm going to start talking to other companies. So make a decision. Don't be that person who goes through three weeks or four weeks or five. I mean, I've seen this happen. Don't be that person that goes through weeks of interviews and several series of interviews and then hesitates on your decision. And then you lose the client. I mean, you lose the candidate to another opportunity. It happens a lot. Also, while you're interviewing people, this whole thing creates, this is your, this is this is the beginning of your employee experience. Your candidate experience is the start of your employee experience. And you're conveying, not even if, even if it's not through telling people, this is what our company culture is. These are what our core values are. You're conveying these things through how you handle candidates through the process. Let me know in the comments. And by the way, if this is helpful, follow me or subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to book a consultation with me and learn more. You can go to my website to learn more about my program, which is the total team makeover, how to hire the right people, fire the wrong ones. That's incredibly important too. And manage your team to get what you want out of your business. And in my program, I teach how to prepare, how to write a really good job description. By the way, make sure you have a salary salary range. That's really important. How to write a good job description, how to create a mission for the role, how to lay out expectations for the role, how to interview. So to make it systematic, remember, studies show, there's an academic study that has shown that the way that most people interview has no predictive value on if the person is going to be successful. So, so many businesses are starting. I want, I want you to be successful. I want you to have a successful business. Bringing people in as part of it, it's part of scaling your business. It's often overlooked. Hiring is often a very overlooked thing. It's not easy. It's not it's not intuitive unless, I mean, some people, I don't know, some people are like born with these amazing management and interview skills. Most people are not. If you're not, and if you have tendencies to shoot from the hip or to sometimes maybe be vague and not be super clear, if you don't have tools and systems in place, well, let's just, let's spin it this, let's spin it around, say when you have tools in place, then the margin of error is much less and you have a much higher chance of success at finding the right people because it is about who is in your business. The team, take it from me, I have built a $50 million business. I have exited other businesses since then. I ran a $35 million business. I've helped other companies build their businesses. I've had a massive failure business. The team, it's so, is so important. And so 
getting the right people in the right seats is incredibly important and how you manage them. So tell me what you think about these five tips and I don't know, maybe eight or nine tips about working with a contingent agency. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you thought this was helpful and let me know what else you'd like to hear about. I'll talk to you soon.